Seven of UNESCO's 911 World Heritage Sites can be found in Indonesia. Besides Borobudur, Indonesia's second wonderful site on the list is Prambanan, located in central Java. Prambanan is considered to be the largest Hindu temple compound in Southeast Asia. There were already some principalities in the first centuries AD that followed Buddhism, but in the 7th century, under the strong Indian influence of the South, they became followers of the god Shiva. Around 780 AD, the Buddhist Sailendra dynasty drove the Hindus to the eastern parts of Java. Memories of the earliest Hindu sanctuaries can be found on the 2,000 meter high Dieng volcanic plateau. These are single chamber constructions decorated with statues and reliefs. The breathtaking Hindu temples of Prambanan were built around 850, about half a century later than the Buddhist Borobudur. It is likely that Prambanan was built around the time the northern Hindu Mataram dynasty and the southern Buddhist Sailendra dynasty united. In the countries that were united together by the marriage of Hindu king Rakai Pikatan Mataramian and Sailendra princess Pramod Havardhani, both religions had followers who lived in peace with each other. This explains why both Buddhist and Hindu temples were built in this area at the same time. Prambanan flourished for almost two centuries, but when the court moved to East Java, the population and the majority of Hindu believers left the region. The temples began to gradually deteriorate, and the process was accelerated by the frequent earthquakes that shook Java. Arabic merchants had already introduced Islam to the area of today's Indonesia, and the religion started to spread in the 15th century. In Prambanam, the now Islamic population gradually removed the collapsed blocks of carved stone and the statues and used them as construction material and decoration for their own houses. During the short-lived British administration at the beginning of the 19th century, they started clearing away the tropical plants and to excavate the ruins. The actual reconstruction of the Prambanan compound started under the Dutch administration in 1885 and lasted, with short intermissions, for several decades. The main Shiva temple was finished in 1953. Only the least damaged temples were restored, which still had their original foundation stones and the majority of their statues and ornaments. Prambanan and Borobudur were listed as UNESCO World Heritage Sites in 1991. Prambanan was seriously damaged again by an earthquake in 2006, and although restoration began immediately, even three years after the earthquake, some temples were still off-limits for safety reasons. The main temples are surrounded by three walls that each form a square with size measuring 110, 222, and 390 meters. The outermost wall, which can scarcely be seen today, was probably supposed to guard the holy place. Between the two inner walls, there were 224 smaller temples. These so-called Pervara temples were arranged in four rows and guarded the inner, most sacred temples. Admission to these temples was once a matter of social rank. Thus, only priests could enter the temples in the inner circle. The third, innermost zone is located on an elevated platform. It contains eight large temples and their eight smaller shrines. The three largest and most beautiful temples are dedicated to the Trimurti, the holy trinity of Hinduism, Brahma, the creator, Vishnu, the keeper, and Shiva, the destroyer. The Kandi Shiva Mahadeva, the tallest and largest temple in the complex, is 47 meters tall, 34 meters wide, and 34 meters long. Shiva, the supreme god in Trimurti, is the destroyer, but Hindus also worship him as the great god, the god of the universe. There are more temples dedicated to Shiva all around the world, 
than to all other gods in Hinduism combined. Shiva is represented with many arms, holding a trident and accompanied by a bull. Shiva's temple faces east and has four entrances and five chambers inside. The three-meter-tall statue of the supreme god, Shiva Mahadeva, stands in the middle chamber. It bears all of Shiva's typical symbols, the skull and the crescent moon on his crown, three eyes on his forehead, and four arms. He stands on a lotus pad on a yoni pedestal. In the four smaller chambers on the sides of the temple, we may find other popular Hindu gods. In the southern chamber, we find Agastya, Shiva's teacher. In the western, Ganesha, the elephant-headed god, Shiva's son. And in the northern chamber, the goddess Durga, Shiva's wife. Over the centuries, Durga's breast has become faded and transparent due to the many hands that have touched it. The Temple of Durga is also called the Temple of the Slender Virgin after Lara Jongdrang, the Javanese princess who, according to legend, was turned to stone. North of the main Shiva temple stands the Vishnu temple, with one single chamber in which the statue of the keeper stands. The reliefs of the temple portray the acts of Krishna, one of Vishnu's incarnations. Brahma, the creator's temple, stands south of Shiva's temple and holds the statue of the god. On the reliefs on the sides of the Shiva and Brahma temples, figures of the ancient Hindu legend, the Ramayana, come to life. According to the classical Sanskrit legend, the hero of Ramayana was Vishnu's incarnation. Rama's wife, Sita, was abducted from him by the ten-headed king of the evil demons. Rama defeats him with the help of Hanuman, the monkey king, then finds and frees his wife from Lanka, the island of Ceylon. The Ramayana is one of the main themes for Southeast Asian dance dramas and ballets. According to cultural historians, the Ramayana is similar to Homer's epic, The Odyssey, while the other Indian epic myth, the Mahabharata is similar to the Iliad, while the other Indian epic myth, the Mahabharata, is similar to the Iliad. The ballet version of the Ramayana is staged in Prambanan at every full moon and is also shown regularly in the nearby city of Jakarta. Almost 200 dancers and gamelan musicians perform on these occasions in front of an international audience. The smaller temples in front of the main temples are usually dedicated to the animals that typically carry the most important gods. In the temple opposite Shiva's, we can see the statue of Nandi, Shiva's carrier bull. Behind her are statues of Chandra, the god of moon, and Surya, the god of sun. Chandra stands on a chariot pulled by ten horses, while Surya's chariot is drawn by seven horses. Brahma travels on the back of the sacred swan Hamsa, and Vishnu travels on the eagle Garuda. Unfortunately, the statues of the later two animals vanished from the temples dedicated to them. Garuda is a man-like mythical creature with the head, beak, and wings of an eagle, and is said to be the implacable enemy of snakes. The name of Indonesia's national airline is Garuda Indonesia. The reliefs here and also in Borobudur represent the same artistic approach. Strict realism, in-depth knowledge of the human and animal anatomy and movement, a balance between figural portrayal and ornamental decoration, and the combination of meticulous care and monumentality is characteristic for the artists of the era.
Besides the statues and reliefs, these temples are also surprisingly rich in other forms of decoration. For example, staircases are lined with so-called makaras, mythological monsters made of fishes and elephants. On the outer side of the balustrade, we can see reliefs of dancers in small chambers. At the bottom, we can see the so-called prambanon motif, a carved relief of a lion in a small chamber with the trees of heaven on either side and two kinaras at the bottom of each tree. A kinara is a mythological bird-like creature with a female upper body. One of the most striking figures of the complex is that the diagonals of the inner square meet not in the central cell of the main temple, but on the left-hand side of the eastern staircase. During the restoration of the temple, they found urns full of ashes near this point, which implied that the temple was the shrine of Prince Rakai Pikatan, who was also buried here. After leaving behind the awesome Hindu temples and walking about a kilometer, we can admire the Kandi Sewu, Pramanan's main Buddhist temple compound. On our way, we'll pass by two smaller temples as well. On the 185 meter by 165 meter base area, there were some 240 small vanguard temples laid down in a mandala pattern. These temples surrounded the main temple in four circles, but most of these have unfortunately been destroyed. The entrance of the temple complex is guarded by fearsome-looking stone statues. There are five chambers in the 30-meter-high main temple. The depth of these shrines reaches four meters, and bronze statues of God stood in them. Unfortunately, these statues have disappeared over the last millennia. On Buddhist holidays, pilgrims from distant Buddhist countries came to Siwa. On these occasions, the entrance and the statues are decorated with flags and flowers. <laughs> 